All right, so in this short video, we're just going to rediscuss what that word assignment means in programming, and then we're going to practice tracing through a couple of programs just so that as we get to conditionals and as we get to for loops and areas where I will require you to trace, I want you to have good practice with tracing. And so we'll do a little bit of that in this video just so you can get an idea of what I expect. So a little reminder, especially for those of you that maybe have not programmed in a while, that equal sign that you see in programming does not work like an equal sign in math. We are not stating that both sides of the equal sign are equal. Instead, remember that this equal sign, in fact, means assignment. So what I am stating is that whatever, so for example, if I had num equals, if we had another, we had counter times four. State that something that we saw in code. This is not stating that num and counter times four are currently equal. What this is saying is that whatever's on the right hand side, whatever is on the right hand side, we are going to assign that into whatever is on the left hand side. So I'm going to take counter times four and I'm going to assign number to be that number. So keep that in mind. This is assigning value to the variable that is on the left. So again, remember that that equal sign is used to assign and rewrite variable values. The value on the right-hand side is assigned into the, val the variable name that is on the left. So there are a couple of valid and invalid statements that I've seen to be common in programming when students haven't programmed a lot in their lifetime. So for example, here, remember this is our declaration. We talked about that in a previous video. Then here is our initialization. That's where our variable is originally assigned a number. And then here you can see that a reassignment is in fact taking place. So you can see here that we are taking this 4 times 5 minus 6 on the right hand side and we're calculating that number and we are then saving whatever that numerical value is inside of the variable name number. So we're saving Whatever 4 times 5 minus 6 is, which seems to be 14, we're saving the number 14 in the location called number in memory. Then if you look down at the bottom in blue, I have two invalid statements here. First, remember that we're always saving the value on the right into the value on the left. Now, this doesn't make much sense. 14 is it's kind of stuck. It can't be changed into something else. And we have the variable name on the right hand side. This is stating that whatever number is, is being saved as 14. That doesn't make sense. Truly for this to be a valid statement of code, this would need to be number is equal to 14. So that's why that one is invalid. The variable name always needs to be on the left. The other piece here that you can see is that it's common for students to say, oh number plus 5 that has to equal 6, but you need to have the variable name on the left by itself because we are assigning that variable name to something. So you can't have anything else over there with it. Instead, if you wanted to save number plus 5 is equal to 6, you would have to say, okay, well, number, that's going to equal whatever 6 minus 5 is. And that would give number that 1 that you are looking for. So remember, the variable always needs to be on the left by itself. All right, so the last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to practice tracing through code. I know a lot of you will find this to be very, very simple, but I want to show you what I expect when you trace so that you know exactly what I will be looking for when I correct your assessments and make sure that you can read through code. So it says trace through the code below. Now, there are a couple things I want you to do. First, I want you to list out all the variable names that could possibly be changed. So I can see that I have number one. I can see that I have number two. And those are the only variables that I'm using in this program. Then from here, I'm also going to have a print area. Print just means it's printing something to the screen. This is, for the most part, a mixture of C-sharp language as well as some pseudocode just so we can print to the screen. But I'll expect to see essentially a column for number one so I can show the changes there. Column for number two, show the changes there. And then a print column to show what is printing to the screen. So I'm going to walk through this one line at a time. First, I can see that I've declared number one to be an integer, and I've declared number two to be an integer. No, they weren't given initial values, but they were declared, so I know they're integers. Then from here, number one is set equal to 
4 plus 5. So I know 4 plus 5 is 9. So I know that number 1 starts off at a value of 9. And then I print number 1 to the screen. So I print 9. Then number 2 is set equal to whatever number 1 is. So number 2 is then assigned the value of 9. And then I'm going to print number 2 to the screen. Then from here, number 1 is set equal to itself plus 1. So I am reassigning number 1 to have a value of 10. Taking what it was before and adding 1. And remember, now in memory, number 1 only knows that it's equal to 10. It doesn't know that it was ever equal to 9. Then I'm printing number 1 to the screen. Number 2 is then reassigned a value. It's set equal to number 1, which is currently 10. And number 2... two which is currently 9, added together. So number 2 gets rewritten and becomes 19. And then I print number 2 to the screen. So for the most part, I know for most of you this is very, very straightforward, but I can see very clearly at the end that number 1 is equal to 10, number 2 is equal to 19, and I have printed the following four numbers to my screen. So when you trace through code, I expect to see all of the variables and their changes. And I also expect to see any print statements that are being made. So I don't want to just see 10, 19, and then some numbers. I want to see the actual changes that have taken place throughout the code and how the variable has changed throughout. So I want to see all these changes. I want to see these changes, and I want to see where those variables do, in fact, end up at the end. All right, so what I'd like you to do here is I'd like you to trace through this program on your own, and then I will walk through it as well for those of you who maybe need a little extra guidance. So pause the video here. Trace through just like I did on the previous page, list all of your variables, and show the changes that are taking place in those variables as the program goes on. So again, pause the video, and then try and trace this through on your own. All right, so remember that the first thing we want to do when we trace is we want to list all of the variables that are potentially being changed throughout this program. So I can see right off the bat, I have an integer called x, so I'm going to list x is a variable, I have an integer called y, so list y as a variable, and I have an integer called z, so I'll list z as a variable. And then I can see that x is assigned the value 3 times 4 minus 2. So I use my order of operations, I know that's 12 minus 2, so x starts off assigned with a value of 10. Then y is assigned the value of x minus 6, while I look at x, x is currently equal to 10, so 10 minus 6 starts y off assigned to a value of 4. Then I can see that z is assigned x plus y, so I see 10 plus 4. So z is assigned a value of 14 to start off. And then from here, I keep going. I see x is reassigned a value of z times 3, so this is 14 times 3. Well, 14 times 3 gives me 42. Then I look down, y is reassigned a value of x plus z. So I can see that y is being reassigned a value. x is currently 42, z is 14. So I can see that x, y excuse me, is reassigned a value of 56. z is then assigned the value of x minus 10, which x is currently 32, so 32 minus, or 42, excuse me, 42 minus 10 which leaves z at 32. And then x is reassigned a value of y minus 10, so y is currently 56 minus 10, that leaves x at 46. So you can see here that at the end of the day, x is equal to 46, y is equal to 56, and z is equal to 32. And I can see all of the changes taking place here as I traced, and then here is where the variables, in fact, end up at the end. So you should be able to trace through very carefully and very neatly, showing me all the changes that are taking place throughout code. So get in this practice now so that when we do more complicated programs in the future, that this is just second nature to you and you know how to be organized with your tracing.